Welcome to a beautiful morning, not yet at the river house. I just got license plates for the brown turd here. And I totally wasn't just driving it without them. But I thought I'd take a moment and do a bit of tinkering. I mean, obviously I knew the fuel mileage wasn't going to be special, but it's, it's worse than I expected for a 318 one barrel that I drive very gingerly. So I was going to tinker around with that. Additionally, my carburetor's kind of acting a bit weird. Sorry, I'm playing with it right now. I thought at the, at the time that the choke wasn't kicking on, but it definitely appears to be kicking on all the way. So it's cold high idle. It isn't isn't working unless I manually do what I just did to the carburetor, but for the life of me It does the same thing with the pedal Somebody commented on how they managed to adjust their um, I believe it was a small block Chevy and got like 22 miles per gallon I wish you lived close enough to tinker with this one. I do know when I put the plugs in it I totally spaced gap in them. So I've checked and the, the gap is is supposed to be 035 so I thought I'd pull the plugs and I don't know maybe they're gap wide maybe they're gap narrow and maybe that'll help <laughs> so that was what I was gonna do this morning and then um, I believe I checked it earlier and it was a little over full on oil and then I checked it this morning and it's about halfway between the lines so if if I was correct and I, I checked it before and it was over full, then um, she uses a fair bit of oil. Yeah, the, the buyer's remorse is strong with this one. Very, very strong with this one. Yeah. They were friends, right? Friends, high school kid. Anyways, let's get those plugs out and, and maybe that'll be the issue. All right, so I found they were gapped a little small, somewhere between 25 and 30. I dug out the plugs I took out of it, and the gap there was 60 plus. Anyways, I, I adjusted these out to around, I don't know, 40-ish is where I put them. I don't, I don't actually expect it to have any real effect. And then this is a Carter, looks like 2378. So I'll go get on the gargler and find out what, you know, like a baseline for the jets are and then I can, you know, find out where they're currently set and find out where they should be set. And, I suspect it's running a little rich. Yeah, we'll give that a try and then we'll give it a cold start. Cold start. I had to go in because my nose is running. I need to catch it. And I'm going to go find out what a 2378 is supposed to be set at. All right, so they say one and a half out is a baseline. Let's just see where they're at, huh? One half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. They were out three turns. All right. That seems crazy. It's probably why it's running so rich. Three on that side, and on this side. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. It's about two and three quarters. All right. 
I'm also supposed to do this hot, but let's go ahead and start with their baseline of one and a half. So they're seated there. Half. Like I said, I believe it's running way too rich, so finding them out that far isn't necessarily a surprise. But I guess now we need to get it warmed up because what the other source said to do for a it's not a performance machine, right? Reasonably accurate was to get it warmed up, back the screws out half an inch, adjust the idle, and then run them in until the idle starts to drop. So we'll we'll see we'll see what happens here. So we should have full choke. Yeah, I don't have the keys in it. All right, we'll be back later. So this is right after it started. And you notice that the, the fast idle didn't kick up at all. Why didn't the fast idle kick up? It was set. It was on. Come on now, sweetheart. There could be junk in the carburetor, and that's why the jets were out as far as they were. I'll try back in the jets back to where they were, and we'll see if we can get started again. I should probably also check the fuel filter, too. It's never warm when this stuff happens. Well, yeah, I had probably a little high there. So the fuel filter was totally plugged. I adjusted the screws back out another half turn, so that would be two out on each of them. And it, it did start, but it was just running like crap until I stuck the screwdriver down through the choke, hold the choke open, and then it wanted to run fine, and now it's just running fine, and I, I suspect it was maybe flooded in there a little bit. So I've adjusted the screws back, to um, or a one and a half out. I right, just gotta wait for it to warm up. See that feels way too high for a fast idle for me. So I'll probably adjust that back down. But I I just keep doing this seesaw dance, right? Where it goes from being too high to too low to too high to too low and so on and so forth. For the moment, I'm just gonna let it roar. Hey! Looks like it did something on its own right there. The choke opened up on its own. Look at that carburetor base icing up. You can feel there's a little occasional hesitation or miss. I'm fine with that. But at this moment, she's running better than it was before. We had a pretty persistent stumble at idle. And I bet the bad stumble on acceleration, probably that fuel filter, Half my day is dang near gone, so I gotta get out to work. So far, this has all been playing. Hey, we're here, finally. And it sounds like frost is running off the roof. 
the fire is lit. You'll notice that back wall is closed in. Still needs to be finish taped. All right. I think the priorities here are to continue getting the sheeting up. So, you know, let's get that hole, these holes, and that hole right there sealed up. Um, I went from a barren desert on uh, half inch sheeting to, I guess I got three pieces left right now and that's gonna take over one. I, I cut it, I cut it okay close. Let's get that stuff in. Then we can finish with some of the verticals on the end walls. And then insulation. Insulation, insulation, insulation. Hey, here we are, the end of the night. But not the end of the night of the video you saw last. This is the end of the night, the day after the night. Um, yeah, continuing the long tradition of somehow managing to work here all day and yet never seem to accomplish anything. <laughs> I can show you what we've accomplished. Oh, first, I did get the, the old refrigerator with the heat lamp in it installed up here so that I don't have to worry about my batteries charging. Lithium does not like to charge when they're cold. They will uh, take the big crapper on you. All right, so I've got, I've got the uprights for that wall. Still not entirely sure how I'm gonna get the outer layer of insulation to lay in there. This is the laundry room and this pocket over the top of it is going to be storage. I mean, why, why not make it storage? So the insulation will just be up there in the rafters and then we can walk around in here. I've moved up the last bits of plywood I have left over from doing the concrete form work. You know, we talk about how much we, night, we like this, uh, the Avantech floor. This right here is, don't mind my munchies, this right here is, is particle board too. And it's been, it's been out and exposed, not to direct rain, but it's been outside without a tarp on it, stuff trickling down through it. Anyways, my wallet would feel a little better if it was in a little worse shape. But, and I have started on this vertical wall here, right, because it's gonna have to go all the way across. We don't yet know whether we're gonna put a door like right up there that you open and then the stairs go down or have an attic trap door stair set in the laundry room, probably that. You know, you just pull them down and make sure they hit here in the walkway. I believe these are gonna run this, this direction. And then that, we weren't, we weren't planning on, we're just gonna flat roof this, this room right here. But since this wall is exposed all the way up, this has all gotta be sheetrocked up into there. So I, what I don't know is if see it'll be it'll be flat roofed right there. There'll be a vertical wall right along here, and then this will be a box. What I what I don't know is if is it even worth turning it into a box? Should I just insulate up into the rafters and just leave that exposed? You know, just partition it off some way, and because uh, you know, by the time you add, this will probably be two by eights. Sorry, two by sixes in here to span this. So by the time you take six inches out, there's just there's no more room. It's not worth like carrying the storage all the way out. Um, 
it's not worth the resources to build it. But I don't know whether I need to put a wall across here or I just leave it open and nobody stores things out there. I don't know. What I do know is I can see from here that this wall is just cattywampus as hell. So tomorrow I'll have to find a way to straighten that. My, my rafters, my trusses, my trusses are not completely straight through here. So I can't just measure off the trusses. I found out that that end of that wall and this end of this wall, they're a half an inch difference in height. That's fun times. This one end truss here is just straight up a different height than the rest of them. They're all the right heights at the top, but my boards, yeah, the dip right there. I don't give a crap. I know that the sheetrock will flex that far, and this is just a storage room, but at least it ain't my fault, right? That, that's not on me. I told you I didn't get much done, but I've been here and been here and been here. We're insulated all the way along into there. We're insulated all the way up, starting back across over there. The idea was that I would get this knocked out in just a few minutes. And then uh, Danny and Shay come and insulate the inside walls. But that didn't happen. It's going to happen tomorrow, I guess, whether I do it or they do it. But Yeah, the goal tomorrow, straighten out. Sir Snake's a lot up there. Get this the rest of the way across up here because that is material I do have here properly. I don't think there's going to be a door out in here. We're just going to we're just going to attic door them down in there, and that way this will be a big heat pocket and some fans and blow it back down. Got a bunch of the mesh picked up. Granted, it's all piled in the back of the pickup truck. So, I don't know, man. Folks ask me how it's going, and it's like, I, I know so little about this. I can't really tell you. I just tell you, it feels like a lot of days where not a lot gets done. And just like that, we're back. And just like that, we're on the hunt of something that is not progress here at the River House. So I said I loaded up all that junk last night and I took it down to the storage shed, which is the mine's old blast shed. If you remember, well, if you've been watching River House for a long time, we moved it once in the dark with a backhoe. It was an adventure. Anyways, it's tucked in the back corner of that is that massive old wood stove that I'd forgotten about. Big cast iron, shaped like a, an old timey water radiator. Wood grain, full wood grain. It was a beautiful stove. And then I stuck a fork through the top of it in the dark because adventure. Anyways, I'd forgotten it was down there. And it is gigantic compared to this thing. So I'm trying to figure out, should I swap them? There's no snow on the ground right now. I'm sure once the backhoe's been on the battery charger for a couple of hours, it'll start. I could just pick it up, bring it up here, and that stove would be large enough that even if we didn't put um, a proper wood stove in this place for a couple of years, it would be all right. You know, because eventually, so the wood stove's going to sit right there and go out through the roof right up there. And so it's really tempting to stop everything and swap the two of them out while the place is empty and the snow is down because I can put a way bigger fire in it and get a lot more heat in here. Huh. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to measure the fire boxes. Okay? I'd hate to move this massive freestanding monster up here and find out that the fireboxes 
more or less the same as this, and all I'm exchanging is some uh, attractive faux Victorian sheet metal for um, a rusty old camp stove, because I'm perfectly fine with a rusty old camp stove. It's just, I know that thing's not big enough to heat the house for a while. Anyways, I'm gonna measure the fireboxes. I know I got enough chimney to hook them up. That kind of stuff doesn't, doesn't bother me. It's, I don't wanna to waste too much of my time. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm off to do. I'm off to go measure some stuff. Well, there it is. That's where I stabbed it with the fork. Dang it. It was largely flawless before that. It's still the back of it and it's still sheet metal and I could fix that part. But we're not here to talk about whether it would be any good as far as uh, appearance. Merely, merely heat. So it's a big double walled stove thing. Hmm. Firebox is considerably larger. Is it worth doing? Is this just more me avoiding doing stuff because I'm confused on how to do this stuff so I find other things that I do know how to do. I mean that's designed to heat a house. My little cabin stove thing is... <laughs> it, was, it was purchased at Ace Hardware 20 years ago. God, it was 20 years ago. Shit, I'm getting old. Here it's out in all of its glory. That grill's been pushed in just slightly. It's an old Ashley. It's not it's not badly rotted out. It's I mean it's close. It's definitely starting. I can see I can see some holes and problems down in there. It's definitely starting the process, but it's not there yet, and that old cast iron stove just leaks like a sieve anyways. I found out why they got rid of it. It's because the, the damper no longer working on it. But that's just, the spring has slipped on the shaft, so I just need to pry that off, do a loop with it, stick it back on, and that'll have that fixed. Here's the top to it, which I ripped the screws out when I hit it with the hoe, but all in all, it's not actually in too bad a shape. It's not too bad. It'd be so much more heat. Yeah, I think I'll probably do it. I think I'll probably do it. And I just hope it's not a I'm wasting my time kind of thing because like I said, I don't exactly know what to do. I need to piece together some more parts to to get her all fitted or whatnot. But I got an elbow there and I got a bunch. And it's just galvanized ducting, but whatever it'll 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 work fine it's farther up in the food chain so it i shouldn't have problems with it burning the galvanizing off okay let's get this done uh, sorry those those artifacts are on the inside of the camera i can't i can't clean the lens well enough but anyways it's installed i got rid of captain sunshine here that was a big resonator for heat. I mean, I suppose if I was smart, I'd try to figure a way to stick it on there. But for the moment, this is gonna work fine. And I set a big old rock up here. So once it warms up, it'll, it'll radiate. You more holes 
in the front than it looked like from the inside. But then this thing has holes everywhere. So it's a it's a real bugger to move it <coughs> by myself, so I'll just probably stick it in here somewhere for at least for the moment. And it's too tall to fit in my dynamite shed. So this is, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I, I can tell you that, that the quantities of heat coming off of it are substantially greater. Substantially greater. Considering the fire isn't any bigger. Yeah, it's not much of a fire. Now to pick up, put the back away, and maybe try to get some some work done. Don't come into the light. And we're done. We got that entire end wall up and in. And more or less straight. Might have to finesse it a little bit. Especially the little ones. You have every stitch of insulation up that either doesn't have to be cut or doesn't have something in the way. Basically every full size bay is up. And of course, when you get into the bedrooms, there's like half the wall cavities aren't done, but they're the bedrooms. So, yeah. Shay and Danny showed up. Give me hand. Shay's been keeping the big fireplace running. It definitely puts off more heat. And double wall, I suspect it's considerably safer than old sunshine there. <laughs> Frank and camera is really struggling today. Lens is falling off twice now. That's probably why all the crap's inside there. Well, I think it was worth moving that big one, if only because we'd be running the little one cherry red just to try to keep up when it gets a little colder and be a whole lot harder to move once there's you know two feet of snow on the ground out here i was wishy-washy in the decision in the beginning but i'm no longer wishy-washy i think it was a fine fine decision grab my drill here boy there ain't a whole lot left of that Pizza. Gonna go home. Have a crisp adult beverage. Sit on my butt. I got the big freezer all lined out. Ah, winds fell apart again. Heat lamp down in there. Well, it's 25 watt bulb, so it's hardly a helium. But. Yeah, I don't, I don't notice any sound difference to speak of. I think because having sheets of plastic over the windows doesn't accomplish much. But I, Echo. yeah, I can tell you for sure it's easier to put some heat into it. And when I bring a big fan to blow across the top of that thing, we might stand a chance of staying ahead of stuff. I think their big rock wool sale is still on. I'm very tempted since the roads are dry and I still have Dad's trailer to go down and uh, load up on the 24 inch and just just do the ceiling cavities. Just do it. I think I think that might be a Oh, this camera. I think that might be a, a smart move, especially since I can go get it after school, because Lowe's is gonna be open until nine or so, and then they just forklift it on and I run it home in the dark. I don't have to interact with anybody. 
Our high school is out with COVID, so we're remote teaching starting starting Monday. Luckily, we had warning. <laughs> no. So Monday morning, we'll we'll be Google meeting it. I still have the junior high in person and the elementary in person. So I think that's a good idea. I think I think I think tomorrow I'll take some some measurements and we'll buy I don't I don't know that I can haul enough will get us a good old-fashioned start those are the ones I think I need the big wires that you bend in there I got a lot of high tensile strength great northern railroad telegraph wire it's copper coated and some sort of high alloy of steel you could you could pull over the Statue of Liberty with one strand of the crap, but you cannot bend it. Anyways, maybe I'll put the kid in a pair of bolt cutters and he can make me up some wire and I can get rid of that stuff. I had visions of using it as gas welding rod, but it didn't work. Anyways, I think we're out of here, guys. Huh? What's gas welding rod? That is when you weld with the torch. I'll teach you how to do it someday. What's the junior high? That is 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Oh, great. Those are the ones that come to my wing. Yep, they're still here. Just like you guys are still there. But should we no longer be here tonight? Should we go home? Yeah. Thanks for watching.